The job market is changing every day and it's hard to keep up. 10 years ago, data engineers were only responsible for building ETL pipelines and the role of big data engineers began to emerge. In 2015, the focus began to shift towards managing cloud orchestration with tools like Airflow, Spark, and Kafka coming into the picture. Then there was mass adoption of cloud platforms like AWS, GCP, and Azure. A little over three years ago, real-time processing and driving business impact became essential. In the last two years, we saw the AI boom and companies slowly started to adopt AI. So what is in store in 2025? Well, let's find out. In this video, we will be conducting an end-to-end -end analysis of the current job market for data engineers. We will be building a script to extract relevant job information from job descriptions of the top tech companies hiring in this market. All to answer questions like, does the industry still need data engineers? If yes, what is the experience needed to break into data engineering? And what are some skills, responsibilities, salary expectations, certifications? And last but not the least, what kind of project should you have on your resume so that you can break into data engineering in 2025? The best part about this video is that you get to execute this code for whichever role you are applying to. It can be data engineer, it can be data analyst, data scientist, you name it. All you have to do is tweak the code a little bit and it'll give you an understanding of what to expect in 2025. So watch until the end if you want to learn on how to do that. And without any further ado, let's jump into the video. Hey there, I'm Sanjana and I make videos on data engineering, AI, and everything in between. And before we go any further, let me go ahead and wish you a very happy and successful 2025. With AI reshaping industries and creating new opportunities, I believe this year is full of growth and innovation. Whether you are new to this data and AI world or you're simply looking to upskill in 2025, I'll be putting out a lot of videos in the coming year. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that said, let's jump into the video. In order to do our analysis, we will be using Search API. If you're looking to gather job listings, location-specific data, or any information you would basically find on Google Search, integrating Search API into your project makes it quick and easy to access. Search API offers several plans to meet different needs. The free tier allows up to 100 searches per month, and it is ideal for small-scale projects and experimentation. The developer plan, which allows around 10,000 searches per month is great for large-scale analytics or for professional use. This API simplifies integrating Google search into your workflows and offers a great flexibility for data extraction. So you can sign up and get started with Search API using the link in the description. Now, once you sign up, you'll be able to see this dashboard and this is where you can see the list of APIs that are available through this. So you have the Google Maps API, Google Shopping API, flights, videos, and so many more options. For this video, we'll be using the Google Jobs API. To get the API key, head on to the API, go to account, API keys. You know, this is where you can create an API and also use your default API. You can also go to Google Jobs and this is where you'll find documentation about how you can use the Google Jobs API. So if I scroll down, I see that all of these are the parameters that you can give uh, using this API. And there is also the best part about it is that there is also some examples that are given over here. So you know how, how you can use it within your code. So now you can directly copy this code and use it, but I'm going to change it a little bit uh, in order to fit our use case. So what I'm going to do here is uh, first, let me just copy this and paste it over here and uh, run this directly. It should work, but I'm going to change it a little bit. Three things that I'm going to do over here is first, I'm going to get Python list of all the tech companies that I am interested in looking at. So list of tech companies, then I will make uh, the job title variable. And I will also add location 
as another parameter. So the final query will look like this for the data engineers. So I'm going to call this data engineer United States. The last one is going to be the name of the company, which is nothing but Meta. So it would ideally be the job title, paste the location and the company name. So let me go ahead and in the end, I would finally store this in a data frame called DF. So now that I have this, what I will do is get a list of companies that I'm interested in. So you can get this from uh, ChatGPT or you can also list your dream companies. So for now, I'm going to list popular companies that generally hire and I'm going to paste it over here. So if I say learn of popular companies yeah so now i have a total of 50 companies that uh, i will look for jobs in as we discussed here the job title will be a variable location will be another parameter i'm going to change the code to that paste it over here again you can you can directly ask ChatGPT for the code i modified it a bit so i'm just going to paste it over here and change this here and I'm going to change this to company names. And now let me go ahead and run this. All right, that took two minutes, 47 seconds. And we have around 429 rows and 13 columns. So let me print our DF here. And you can see that it has the position, title, company name, location, description, job highlights, apply link, and a lot of other information. Now that we have this data, this will become the source of truth for our analysis. Now the simplest thing to do would be to just go to ChatGPT and uh, upload this document and chat with it. I did that last year and the results were satisfactory. This year I want to take it up a notch and try my hand at using perplexity. If you haven't used perplexity before, then perplexity is this amazing tool that combines search capability with chatbot capabilities. What I like about Perplexity is that it allows you to play with multiple LLM models like ChatGPT, like GPT-4, Claude, Grok, and so many others. It also has these bunch of features like spaces, threads, and image caption generators. And whenever you look for something, it gives you the citation on the right so you know exactly where your information is being picked up from. I use Perplexity for research all the time. And if you haven't tried it before, definitely check it out. Link is in the description. Now I've saved my data frame as a CSV file. So I'm going to go and upload it here on Perplexity. So the way I can do that is by simply clicking upload, attach and uh, click on my file. And once I do, it uh, uploads it automatically. Here I can select uh, which focus mode I want it in. So sometimes I want it on web search mode, academic, math, writing, video, social, you know, and this is just the name of my university. Select whichever mode you want it in. For this, I'm going to select the math mode. Now, before we start, I want to give a brief disclaimer here. Whenever we use LLM, it's highly possible that they are hallucinating and the results or the answers that they provide may not be completely accurate. So we need to take this into account whenever we are working with LLMs and make sure that we are establishing certain guardrails so that they do not uh, hallucinate too much. One of the other ways in which you can control hallucinations is by working on your prompting technique. I worked on my prompts and for this analysis, I did a little bit of trial and error with the kind of questions I was asking. And uh, though the results are not exactly, not completely accurate, I feel like I've gotten pretty far. By I'm pasting my prompts here on the screen and you can copy the same. So now let me start. Like I said, I've already done a little bit of analysis. So let me switch to that tab. And uh, this was my prompt. 
I have asked it for uh, analysis on several key areas. First one being based on the data provided, can you tell me in one line the total number of jobs in the total companies? So you can group different company names based on the most commonly used name for the company. I had to give this because uh, the LLM specify this because you know the Amazon can be Amazon Development Center, Amazon Alexa, you know there, there, there could be several Amazon subdivisions that could be hiring and um, I want to tell the LLM that intuitively that please take, please group all of this into the same thing, into the same company name, which is Amazon. This is the first question and it's more of a question I asked to check if the data, if Flexity is able to read the data or not, it is able to read the, the CSV file and it says the total number of jobs are 429 and the total companies are 164. It says that it is grouping by the most commonly used company name. I don't know whether to trust it on this or not, but I'm just going to go for it right now. But if you want to conduct some detailed analysis, make sure to take the data set that you've uh, gotten before and, uh, you know, like clean it up, make sure you're getting the right result out of it. Since this is only to get a high level understanding of what, how the job, job market is right now, I'm going to just consider the response over here and go ahead with it. So that was the first answer. The second question I asked was, based on the data provided, can you give me a distribution of range of dates in which these jobs were posted? I asked this because I wanted to see how many companies were hiring in different months. What it gave me was that the jobs were posted across several months with the distribution shown in the bar chart provided. So the bar chart, it says it says from August to December and the number of jobs over here seems way off because we have 429 job postings and it is not exactly giving me the right number of job postings but uh, it could also be because the job posting the date information may not have been present in the csv file which is why it is it couldn't retrieve it we know the range it's from august to december all right so the third question is based on the data can you tell me if experience is needed to become a data engineer Again, this is a very generic question and what I was trying to get out of here was whether there are some job postings, how many job postings have, within the qualifications of the job postings, how many of them require like what kind of experience, like is it uh, entry level, mid level, senior level, stuff like that. So if we go here, it says yes, 95.57% of the job descriptions explicitly mention the need for experience, commonly specifying years of experience in tools, technologies or domains. It seems that as opposed to qualification being bachelor, senior, or you know, mid-level or uh, across that range, it seems that the job postings are asking for experience more on the usage of the tool. So the sooner you start using tools, the sooner you'll be able to get into the field. All right, so the fourth question is, I explicitly asked, what qualifications are needed to become a data engineer? The answer that it has provided is the common qualifications include degree. So there are 224 mentions of a degree, namely master's, bachelor's, PhD in fields like computer science or data science. And there are 75 mentions of certifications and these certifications particularly seem to be AWS certification. I went in order to get like an exact graph, I also got I also have this other graph where it is showing the number of times different uh, certifications were mentioned. So it seems that AWS certifications are mostly needed in the job descriptions and then there are Azure and the frequency for this is 150, Snowflake, Tableau and Google Cloud. So it says that the top certifications for data engineering roles are AWS. Azure, Snowflake, Tableau, and Google Cloud. Now, this could just be the number of times these terms were mentioned, but it is, or it could also be the number of times the word certification was men mentioned alongside, alongside these terms. Coming to the fifth question, which is, what are the top rank skills needed to become a data engineer? Do the job roles require us to know AI? And give me in descending order and explain which companies are looking for which skills specifically. For this, it says that the top skills for data engineers are ranked by frequency. AI is mentioned 2,326 2, mentions of AI, which is sort of weird for a data engineer position. Then there is machine learning mentioned 217 times, data modeling mentioned 69 times, and statistics mentioned 28 times. Other skills like Python, SQL, 
Snowflake, Tableau are also frequently mentioned. So this is quite surprising to me that there are 2000 mentions of AI within this within these 429 job postings. So it could mean that data engineering could be headed towards AI. And this is what I got. So Python is mentioned over 300 times. AI also has significant mentions, but it doesn't match the mention that it previously said. Then there is SQL, Snowflake, Machine Learning, Tableau, Statistics, and Data Modeling. These could be the top skills for data engineers in 2025. Moving on to the next question, which is based on the data provided, can you summarize the responsibilities in the job description? So the responsibilities in the job descriptions, it has not summarized the responsibilities. However, it has given me developing the fre most frequent mention of the number of terms, developing, building, designing, supporting, implementing solutions, optimizing and analyzing data processes are also common tasks. It turns out that if you want some more context, you might have to like get it from the job description. Also tried getting a graph out of this, something like this, design, support, build, develop, optimize, analyze, etc. So these are the just a top responsibilities in job descriptions. Uh, based on the data, can you give me the salary range? Overall salary range is, what am I seeing this number right? Does it say a million dollars? That doesn't sound right. So that's why I tried querying it again. And it told me that the average salary range looks something like this. It's somewhere around 60K to 120k which is the minimum salary and the maximum salary is also ranges from somewhere around 120k to 220k so so the average of this comes to around 135k which is higher than last year okay i'm gonna skip this question because it did not give me an answer for that uh, for question number 10 it said my question was Based on the data, can you give me uh, your take on are certifications required to become a data engineer? If yes, can you specify these certifications along with uh, the frequency of occurrences? This is the same question as before, and it says AWS 65 occurrences, general certification 75, Azure and cloud certifications are also less common, but still relevant. And coming to our final question, what kind of projects should you build so that you can break into data engineering and give me three portfolio project examples along with detailed skills needed. So I tried to get three data engineering projects and it said, first is you should have a real time analytics pipeline, then another e-commerce data warehousing project and a machine learning deployment pipeline. So the skills needed for these are Python SQL, Apache Kafka, S3 ETL processes, data modeling, Tableau SQL, Python Python, Docker, Kubernetes, and several other cloud platforms. So that was about chatting on perplexity with document. Now you can take this up a notch and uh, use this document to get more company specific data. So what you can do over here is let me attach this again and you can modify the prompts to relevant questions related to the company you're interested in getting into. For example, you can say based on the data provided, can you give me your take on what kind of experience is needed? What kind of experience experience is needed to become a data engineer at Meta, for example. And uh, this will detail and this will give you an answer uh, to your specific company specific question. It gives you some context on what kind of educational background Meta is expecting in these roles. What are the technical skills? What kind of experience? What kind of problem solving skills, soft skills, qualifications and here it has gone to the next two and it's also saying that I can give you more insights to similar roles at Apple. This is just one example of how you can chat with this document. You can also add your resume over here and ask it very specific questions on how you can modify your resume depending upon the job descriptions that you get out of this. So that was it. That was our analysis. And the link to this entire code is given in the description. Make sure to run it by yourself, conduct your own analysis and let me know in the comments as to what you found. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. I wish you a happy new year 2025. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.